I collapsed due to stress-induced gastric ulcer and overwork and was rushed to the hospital. Then my husband, who had treated me like a slave for a long time, appeared in the hospital room. Collapsing from overwork is just an exaggeration, especially for a carefree housewife like you. That's because Hugh... What's the matter with me? You've got something to complain about? My husband glared at me with bloodshot eyes, and I shrank back. I have to stay in the hospital. My body has to heal. Then who's going to do the housework during that time? Huh? Well... Stop making excuses about hospitalization and neglecting housework. Get discharged soon and take care of the chores. My husband violently kicked my bed while I was sleeping. The impact ran through my body and I staggered. I took you in, even though you have nothing. You should serve me and do the housework perfectly. I'm the one supporting a wife who's only good for that much. At that moment, I reached my limit. I couldn't stand being with someone like him any longer. Right after that, I noticed a figure behind my husband. Gathering my strength, I smiled at him. Is that all you want to say? Turning around on the spot, my husband instantly turned pale. My name is Gabriella, and I'm 28 years old. My parents divorced when I was young, and the mother who took me in passed away from illness a few years ago. With no family to rely on, I had an intense longing to have a marriage and a home. I had been working in accounting at a small company for a long time, when one day, a colleague introduced me to a man. That man turned out to be Keith, who would later become my husband. Keith was working at his father's company, poised to be the next successor. I was increasingly drawn to him, thanks to his promising future and lively personality. It seemed Keith also liked me, and one day he said something like this. I like refined women like you, Gabriella. Gabriella, you fit my ideal perfectly. I am not so much refined as I am reserved, unable to clearly express my opinions. However, it seems that such a trait unexpectedly captured Keith's heart. We dated without any problems for about a year, and on our first anniversary, Keith proposed to me. Gabriella, let's get married. Please, accept this. Of course, yes. Thank you. I'm so happy. Filled with joy, I accepted the ring he offered. As I gazed at it with fascination, Keith said teasingly, Isn't this what they call a Cinderella story? You with no background marry me, the next company president. I felt somewhat hurt, as if my lack of parents was being looked down upon. I'm not marrying you because you're the next company president, you know? Yeah, true. Well then, Gabriella, let's get along from now on. And so we went to visit Keith's parents' house. His family consisted of his father, who served as the company president, his mother, who was the managing director, and his sister, Maggie, who had married and moved out. They welcomed me warmly. Maggie opened the door with a big smile. Well, well, Keith bringing such a lovely lady. Come on in. Gabriella, right? You're a beautiful person, quite the opposite of me. All slender and elegant. Nice to meet you. With a hearty laugh and a robust figure, Maggie seemed to be a straightforward person. My father-in-law directed a smile towards me and said, Gabriella? We fully support this marriage. By the way, what does your family think about it? Um, well, I explained my family situation, and Keith's family listened attentively with serious expressions. So, 
I don't have any family, but I believe my late mother would be happy about this marriage. Well, if that's the case, it must have been tough for you until now. While holding back tears, my mother-in-law took my hand. If that's the case, you can think of us as your real parents and rely on us. My sister-in-law also nodded with a serious expression. Keith, make sure to take care of Gabriella properly. Hitting Keith's back, my sister-in-law said this. He lowered his eyebrows, replying, I know, sis. On the way back, I told Keith, Your parents and sister are wonderful people. I'm happy to become part of the family. Really? I was scared of them when I was a kid. Especially my sister. She was like a female gorilla. Keith shrugged his head, and I laughed a little. Later, Keith and I got married, and we started living in an apartment gifted by my father-in-law as a wedding present. The apartment was located about an hour away from Keith's family home. Soon after that, Keith told me, Hey, Gabriella, now that we're married, would you consider quitting your job? Huh? I was surprised. I have been working at that workplace for 10 years as a full-time employee since high school graduation. I had good relationships with my colleagues and superiors. Even after marriage, I naturally assumed I would continue working, as it was also my mother's wish. After quitting her job due to marriage, my mother struggled with finding a new job after her divorce. She had advised me, You'll regret quitting your job after marriage. Don't let go of your career. In accordance with my mother's words, I wanted to continue working. That's why I explained it to Keith. I want to continue working even after marriage. At that moment, he furrowed his brows. Huh? Your job is just accounting anyway. There are plenty of people who can replace you. I earn enough for us to live comfortably, and I want you to handle the house. I kept refusing, but Keith persisted. Still, I kept telling him I wouldn't quit my job. It seemed he gave up, and I understood that he had finally relented. We are going to start working together and have a happy marriage. I thought so, but I soon hit a wall. Keith wouldn't do any household chores. Despite having experience living alone, he wouldn't even do simple things like cleaning. While I worked tirelessly on household tasks, he lounged on the sofa, playing with his phone. Handling all the household chores alone became burdensome, as I also had a job. Living alone, I could slack off on chores or cook simple dinners, but with a husband, it was different. Frustrated after months of doing everything by myself, I finally confronted him. Hey, Keith, I have a favor to ask. Could you please help with household chores a bit more? But Keith, without looking up from his phone, responded. Huh? Why don't you, Gabriella, do it? I'm tired from work. I work too. It's not fair for me to do all the housework. There's nothing unfair about it. Household chores are a wife's job. Plus, you chose to work. So manage both work and house chores properly. But, while I was dumbfounded, he continued. I've been thinking for a while. You're lacking in house chores. Dinner is too plain, and I want two more side dishes. Clean more thoroughly every day. That's impossible. I... Because you're working? I've told you to quit that kind of job. I don't want to. Fine. I see. Keith easily gave in. But two days later, something unbelievable happened. My boss came to my desk, showing me a resignation letter. Gabriella, this came. What's going on? Huh? I didn't plan on quitting. And I didn't submit a resignation letter. Could it be your husband's handwriting? I won't pry too much, but talk it over with your husband. 
As soon as I got home, I questioned Keith. He responded angrily. You can't even do house chores properly, and you want to work? I wrote and sent that resignation letter. This is too much. Just quit your job. If not, we can get a divorce. Facing the possibility of divorce less than six months into our marriage, I felt paralyzed. I didn't want to be alone again. With a heavy heart, I said, Okay, I understand. I'll quit my job. You should have done that from the beginning. Now, focus on house chores. After Keith left, I cried. From then on, I became Keith's desired stay-at-home wife. But that was the beginning of hell. If I couldn't meet Keith's expectations with household chores, he would scold and berate me. I, who grew up in a single-parent household, was insulted. One day, when I mentioned needing money for living expenses, Keith looked down on me. You waste money all the time, so I'll manage our finances from now on. What? You'll live on $670 per month, and don't slack off on my meals. I'll check the receipts strictly. So I had to manage our life within a budget of $670 each month, barely covering expenses for two people. Despite asking for an increase, I was denied. I resorted to eating close to expiring bread to make ends meet. After a few months of this lifestyle, I lost a considerable amount of weight, and my chronic stomach pain worsened. Keith's demands were endless turning me into something akin to a slave. But I had no strength left to resist. One day, as I went to pick up dry cleaning, as per Keith's instructions, I collapsed on the street, writhing in pain and covered in cold sweat. Feeling agonized, I eventually lost consciousness. When I came to, I found myself lying on a hospital bed, with a doctor peering down at me. Did you notice? You collapsed on the street. I had a severe stomach ache. Let's conduct some tests. Your nutritional condition seems quite poor. You'll be admitted, so please inform your family. At that moment, I contacted Keith and another person. After the tests, it turned out that I had a severe stomach ulcer. I ended up being hospitalized. I was sitting on my bed in a daze until the evening when I heard the hospital room door open. It was Keith who showed up. He left the door open and approached me with a stern look on his face. Hospitalized? All of a sudden? What on earth happened? I collapsed in the driveway. Severe stomach ulcer, malnutrition, and they said I was overworked. Keith sniffed as I answered in a small voice. Huh, what about it? Overwork is such an exaggeration. You're a carefree housewife. That's because you- What the hell are you looking at? Got something to say? With bloodshot eyes, Keith glared at me and I composed myself. Hospitalization is inevitable. I need to recover. Then who's gonna do the housework in the meantime, huh? Well... Just stop using hospitalization as an excuse to slack off on chores. Hurry up and get discharged to do the housework. At that moment, Keith violently kicked my bed as I lay there. The impact shook me, and I staggered. I took in someone as useless as you. Serve me and do the housework perfectly. That's the only thing you, a useless wife, are good for. And I'm supporting you. At that moment, I reached my limit. I couldn't endure being with such a person in a marriage any longer. Right after that, I noticed a figure behind Keith. Gathering my strength, I smiled at that person. Is that all you wanted to say? Huh? What are you... so cheeky? At that moment, I remained silent and pointed behind Keith. Turning around, Keith's face turned pale. M maggie and why are dad and mom here yes standing there were my in-laws and my sister-in-law holding a bouquet for a hospital visit 
I asked your sister, who lives near this hospital, to procure some hospital necessities for me. When she did that, it seems your parents got worried and came as well. Before Keith could react, my sister-in-law jumped at him. In the next moment, she expertly threw him with a loud thud onto the hospital room floor. Ouch! What the hell, Maggie? Did you forget I took karate lessons? More importantly, what was the meaning of what happened just now? I saw everything, you know. It, everything? Then my mother-in-law took a step forward. Her face was bright red. Keith, we've been listening to your interactions from the beginning. What on earth is going on? Asking Gabriella to do the housework after she gets discharged? Could it be Gabriella ended up hospitalized like this because of you? Unable to endure it any longer, I shed tears while confessing everything right there. I revealed all the mistreatment I had endured from Keith. The gastric ulcer, malnutrition, overwork, all of it is because of Keith. A silence fell upon the hospital room. Keith, with a bright red face, uttered, It's my fault? It's because you can't do the housework properly. I just disciplined you. Don't shift the blame. In the next moment, my mother-in-law slapped Keith across the face. Ouch! What the hell, Mom? If you had stayed quiet, what were you planning? Treating Gabriella so horribly. You're heartless. I can't believe you're my son. At this point, my sister-in-law chimed in. You were just pretending to be a good guy in front of us, huh? Your character is twisted. You're the worst for pushing Gabriella to the point of hospitalization. Hey, Mom. Maggie, calm down. Dad, say something. You should understand my feelings, right? At this moment, my father-in-law, who had been silent until now, slowly spoke up. What are you saying? That I would understand your feelings? What a joke. I've never put your mother through such hardship. Dad, you know what it takes to be a president? What, isn't it having a management plan or something? Hey, I've got confidence, you know? No, it's about valuing people first and foremost. To entrust the company to someone who can't cherish his wife like you is unacceptable. I'm firing you, and I'm disowning you as family. Get out of that house. Huh? Fired? Disowned? Keith, turning pale rapidly, then turned to me. Fine, I messed up. So Gabriella, please, calm down my dad and the others. No, I refuse. Huh? At that moment, I decisively said to him, Keith, let's get a divorce. I can't forgive you. Please live quietly alone from now on without hurting anyone. W what Keith's face turned pale and his neck was grabbed by his sister who dragged him out. After that, I apologized to my in-laws many times. Eventually, our divorce was finalized, thanks to my father-in-law hiring a lawyer and the favorable testimonies from my in-laws. I smoothly divorced him. I received some property division and alimony. Additionally, my in-laws generously provided a significant amount as compensation. Apparently, that money was from selling the apartment we used to live in. Afterwards, Keith was indeed fired from his father's company. Driven out of his home and having depleted his savings on payments to me, he rolled into a shabby apartment and is desperately job hunting. On my end, thanks to the alimony, I moved and started a new life. Fortunately, I was able to return to the company I left, and now I'm working for a company that I find rewarding. I will continue to be grateful to my in-laws for being on my side. I want to make an effort to find true happiness.